Hello and welcome to this week's Stamp It Sunday. This week I'd like to show you how I created this uh, fantastic little piece of artwork. It's using the scene stamps from um, Stampscapes <clears throat> and just a couple of colours of archival ink. And I think the, the finished result is really, really beautiful. So I hope you agree and I hope you'll stay watching and see how I made it. So these are the scene, um, scene stamping stamps that I'll be using today. I've got a whole collection of these that I picked up some time ago while I was out on tour with the All Counties Craft Challenge. I particularly love them because they're red rubber so you can do all the different techniques that you like with rubber stamping. I think though I will pop these to one side and uh, make a start on the project that I've got for you this week. Just before I start, I will actually show you a couple of examples of things that I've made previously with these stamps. There's various different ideas that you can do with them and build them up in so many different ways from very abstract scenes with, you know, just colour and a single stamping, or perhaps even, you know, turning them around and looking at them in a different way. There's uh, almost like a sunrise or a sunset there over the fir, uh, fir trees. There's a waterfall that I created there. A nice mountain scene with a single star at the top that could signify hope, perhaps. And then a lovely, lovely nighttime scene here using just a single stamp and tones of colour. What I'll be stamping on today though is stamp board and this is a fabulous, fabulous thing to use. Uh, it's like a thick wood with um, almost like a matte paper coating. Great to stamp on though because it's such a brilliantly absorbent surface for your inks. I'll also be using the archival ink range because I want these to be um, permanent and waterproof and archival ink is both of those as well as acid free. I've chosen three stamps to work with today. I've got a little um, sun in the clouds or moon in the clouds. <clears throat> I also have a little waterfall scene and that's a smaller version of the one you saw earlier. Sorry, not a waterfall, idiot. It's a pathway scene and some fir trees. First things first, I'm going to use my stamp positioning tool from Crafts 2 and I've already got some tack and peel on it so I don't have to glue up the stamps or add the foam cushioning. I'm going to ink up the pathway scene with the black archival ink. I love these new mini archival ink pads, they're great. You can have loads out on the desk at one time and you could ink up small or large areas of your stamps. The stamp positioning tool is brilliant too because it allows me to really get the position right before I commit to making the actual impression. Less risk of going wrong too. impression. You can see that there. Now I'm going to use that, um, let's call it a moon and cloud because we're doing almost like a nighttime scene here, but you could just as easily use it as a daytime version. I'm inking up um, around the area because I don't know how much it's going to fall off the edge of the stamp board. I'm inking this with the shadow grey colour as well because I want it to recede into the background. I don't want the clouds to be as black as the foreground. 
What I've done is because these aren't clear stamps, I've also positioned on the back of the stamp um, just a, a mark with a black pen as to where the moon is. And I did that just by feeling it. That means that I can actually position the moon where I want it to be in the scene. Okay, perfect. I'll just give you a look at that. Now there are some blank spaces down the bottom, but I'll come back to those later and I'll show you how I tackle that. What I'm going to do before I put the stamps away is create a couple of masks. I'm using masking film for the moon. one side to dry because it will take some time because it's a masking film obviously any ink will take longer to dry and I'll quickly dab off the ink from my um, rubber stamp. I'm going to bring back in the pathway seam, ink that up with some black ink just briefly it doesn't have to be fully inked I just need the outline or the impression and I'm going to use the all over post-it notes so they're the ones with sticky all over the back and just gently press that onto there so that I can see what I'm doing. Also going to grab a black pen and extend the lines out to the edge of the post-it note. And that's really just where I want to mask off. So it's the top of the hills where the hills meet the sky. I'm not going around the trees because that doesn't matter. Right, stamps to one side for a minute, and it's time to get cracking with some ink. Just before I ink this up though, I am actually going to dry off the ink. I started to ink this up, but I think I will hang on for a second and dry off the black and the grey. Just purely because stamp board, it does take a little longer for the archival, you know, the juicy inks to dry off. And I want them to be absolutely bone dry before I start applying other ink. Otherwise it will all smudge. don't know whether you can tell, but my embossed heat tool is proper filthy. It's got paint and glue and God knows what on it, but it's still belting out the heat like a trooper. Fabulous little tool that. Had that years. Just while that cools off and dries, I will cut out my masks. Don't have to be too precise with this because you can actually just move the mask around and position it so that you get it in the right place for what you need. I'm going to keep both parts just in case I need them, but generally I'll be using the bottom. With the masking film, that's almost dry, but I might just give it a very quick blast with the heat tool. I don't want to melt it, I just want to dry off that surface ink. Put 
probably not the best way to test if something's dry, sticking your finger in it, but you know, it works. This is probably one of the tinier masks I've ever made. Right, I think that must be dry now. Yep, I'm sticking the finger in it and again. Whoopsie. Good job it was dry. Okay, back with the pink ink. And this is the Vibrant Fuchsia. All I'm doing is I'm just using a bit of cut and dry foam, picking up some ink on the ink pad, and then gently brushing it in from the edge. Now, the stamp board will possibly rip and tear your um, cut and dry, but generally that's not an issue. You just blow the pieces off, as you'll probably see me do a lot. Um, I am generally trying to apply it all in one direction, but every now and again, I will swipe across because this helps um, get rid of any lines that you've created with your with your cut and dry and helps give a much more blushed or airbrushed look to the to the application of the ink. Now then it does take me some time to do this so I think I will speed this bit of the video up. As this was going, I just realised that um, I hadn't actually positioned my little moon mask on. So I quickly grabbed that before things went too far with the pink ink and carried on. Okay, so there's my pink blush, and as you can see, I've kind of avoided going around the uh, moon or over the moon. I wanted to keep that white and have almost like a, a glow around it. Next up, I am picking up the Majestic Violet, and I'm doing the same thing. I'm going around all of the edges and brushing that in, and almost creating like a vignette, like you would see around an old photograph. So it gets darker as it goes out towards the edges. Again, I'll speed this bit of the clip up so we can crack on. Now, because I've got a lot of wet ink there, I'm going to give it again another blast with the heat gun. Just to really dry and set that archival ink pad.
there we go. Now I'm bringing in that mask for the pathway scene and I'm positioning that over where I need it to be. And I'm going to start going around the top edges again with the um, pink and the purple colours. This time I am adding a little bit more colour kiss to the centre area. Okay, my extra inking is done. Now I'm removing my mask. I'm not sure if you'll pick this up on camera, but there is definitely a difference between the tones in the top area and the bottom area of the design. Just again, gonna give that a quick dry. Every time I apply new layers of ink, I generally dry them off just to make sure that I'm not spreading ink or wetting where I don't want it to be because that would be a proper pain in the bum. Okay now I'm coming in with some black archival ink pad and again some cut and dry foam. This time I'm kind of pouncing the um, ink onto the edges of the stamp board at about a 45 degree angle and squishing the foam in. So there's some black coming over the edge, but what it's doing is it's colouring the actual edges of the stamp board, plus it's kind of giving an accent, a darker tone to that vignette around the edges. Quick blast with the heat gun, you saw me doing it again there. Now what I'm doing is I'm bringing in that set of fir tree stamps that we saw at the start of the video. And I'm gonna ink up just one of those for now. This is the great thing about that stamp positioning tool. I can position that stamp wherever I need it to be before I even press down. Okay, so my goal here was to fill in those little blank spaces that I had either side of the pathway scene. I think one wasn't quite enough, so I'm going to do a second one. I'm just wiping off any excess ink. You can, of course, mask off any areas you didn't want to ink up if you're having a go at this at home. Yep, that works for me. What do you think? kind of gives some extra dimension to the scene and makes that pathway seem longer and like you're really looking down an avenue. I think I'll repeat this on the other side using the smaller tree from the set. Yeah, that's 
good, but again, I think I need a second one here. to wipe off. Here we go, looking good, isn't it? Now the archival ink did give me the black border, but it's quite matte. So what I'm doing is I'm going with the VersaCraft ink pad, um, just the plain black. This um, is a multi-use ink pad, so you can use it on all sorts of different projects. Uh, but you can heat set it, which is different to some pigment inks. <clears throat> I personally like the fact because it gives me a really dramatic black border. And it's quite an opaque colour as well, so it will cover, you know, the purple and the pink. Again, I'm kind of using that pouncing motion rather than um, dragging or blending. And also working at about a 45 degree angle so that some of the colour catches onto the main design area. But the majority is going on the edges of the design. you can heat set it so I'm going to give it a good old blast with the heat gun and just dry everything off because I'm just about finished Okay, one final thing to do, and that's remove the mask that's on the moon. Bit of a fiddly process, but I've got my fine tip tweezers. And there we go, a bright white moon in the beautifully pinky purple sky. What do you think? Cool, huh? Now, of course, you could seal this with either a matte or a gloss sealer. It's horses for courses, whichever you prefer, or you can just leave it as it is because obviously it's archival ink, so it's waterproof and it's permanent. And there we go. That's how I made the beautiful dreamy purple pink landscape. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. There'll be plenty more videos coming up fairly soon. And of course, if you would like to, please pop over to my blog, gentlemancrafter.com, or find me on any of the other social networks. Thanks for watching. See you again next time.